Well, hello, traders and investors. Today is August 13th. We're almost done with the second week of October. My birthday month is on the 29th of this month. Where has the year gone? I'm, I'm still thinking. I have like this black hole in my head between March and 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 August. It's like it's like I, I, I don't know what happened. It, I know it has a lot to do with what, what's been going on in the world and COVID and so forth. And wealth press has been growing and I've been really busy. But boy, oh boy, it's like a black hole. I, I hope some of it comes back to me. But boy, oh boy, this market has been keeping everyone on their toes. Starting off, we've got CPI, Consumers Price Index. We're going to see if inflation has hit Wall Street or not. That's going to be coming out in about 15 minutes. And not for aside from used cars, in, inflation has been fairly steady in August. And hopefully that'll move forward into September as the report will be coming out very, very shortly in about 15 minutes. That's the big report for today. Um, tomorrow, we got the PPI, Producers Price Index. That'll give us some idea on the cost of, of goods. Jobless claims is coming out on Thursday. Manufacturing index is going to be really, really big. And again, the biggest reports of the week is going to be retail sale and consumer sentiment. Industrial production is going to be really good, especially when we take that into account with the PPI. But again, retail sales and consumer sentiment account for two-thirds of the GDP. And the GDP is the biggest report of the quarter because it's telling us if the economy is moving ahead or not. So that's what we've got on the plate this week. Let's start talking about global economy. We've got a lot to talk about. There's a lot of stuff going on. Markets are mixed right now. Stocks turned lower in Europe on Tuesday after a mixed session in Asia. Investors turned cautious over prospects of reining in a resurgence in the outbreak. Shares fell in London and Paris, but they edged a little bit higher in Tokyo and Shanghai after China reported its export jump nearly 10% in dollar terms. That's big, 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 big. As its economy recovered from the pandemic, U.S. futures were lower. This is a very, very positive sign that China's making a comeback. Now, if Trump doesn't push them too hard with this trade war, we've got a, a good chance of, of, of picking up our economy. Because remember, when trade war, not the trade war, when the pandemic first started, what economy got soft really fast? China, and it impacted us badly. Remember, it's the second biggest economy in the world. Hope for a vaccine for the COVID were shaken. This is bad because Johnson & Johnson was one of the um, ones we were depending on. Said a late-stage study of its vaccine candidate was paused while the company investigates whether a participant's unexpected illness was really related to the shot. Now, last time this happened, about a month ago, it, uh, somebody got really, really sick. I think they got spinal cord injury or something. But it wasn't, it wasn't Johnson & Johnson. It was another company. But I got to say, these... I hope that they're not going to speed up these uh, trials to a point where a bunch of people are going to get sick. That's not what we want. The head of the World Health Organization told reporters briefing Monday that countries have reported record high daily increases from previous four days, especially in Europe and America. That's bad. That's bad, 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 because winter months are coming. Winter months, uh, flu, vaccines are less effective people have a lower immune system uh, winter months is not a good time for these for these viruses the number of confirmed cases of the virus has climbed to more than 37 million worldwide oh my god that's almost 40 million people according to a tally by john hopkins more than a million have died according to the tally which experts say understates the actual number of cases optimism optimism that's what we need over hopes for new aid for the economy has faded which is why the market is kind of softening up again with signs of a stalemate over more stimulus might persist until after the election investors are also sticking to the sidelines that's very very typical before the election same thing happened four years ago the summer was really active the market was really hot and as soon as september hit the market i mean as soon as Second week of September, third week of September, the market just died all the way through November. And then it picked up the day after um, the elections. Sentiment is in Asia, got a modest boost from China, reported that its exports rose. This is very positive, about almost 10% from a year earlier, while imports gained 13%. This is important because the faster China can get their, you know, what together, 
the better it'll be for other countries because China is a huge, huge exporter. Huge, huge exporter. We get a lot of our little uh, chips, glassware, semiconductors, all these little things that we take for granted come from China. Customs data showed exports to the United States rose 20%. This is great. To 44 billion despite high U.S. tariffs. Nobody cares about that right now. While imports rose 24%. This is positive. This is positive. Chinese exports have benefited from Chinese relative early reopening from pandemic shutdowns and from strong global demand for masks and medical supplies. Very true. Folks, I had no idea all the little things that were made in, made in China till we saw this closure in February and March. And then I was like, oh my God, I can't believe. And it's And here's the thing. A lot of the things that are made in USA, a part will be made in China. A little part, a little glass part or a little coil or a little cable or something electrical. And that part cannot be replicated. And the whole, uh, the whole product or service is scratched till it is. I've seen that happen several times. Literally, companies almost get to a point where they're going BK because a part of their supply chain is made in a third world country. So the fact that China is getting their you know what together is very, very, very positive. Crude oil, again, right like a dollar below the price that US frackers pay to begin working on crude oil. So there's a glut of crude oil. The supply is huge. I think we're gonna hear tomorrow, no, not tomorrow, sometimes on Wednesdays, we're gonna hear it on Thursday. Sometimes these re reports happen on Thursday, Wednesdays, sometimes they happen on Thursdays. But we're gonna get the petroleum status report. Don't hold your breath, really, don't hold your breath. So what I'm getting from this report overall is, it looks like things are weakening, but it looks at the same time like China is starting to really gain. Uh, other parts of the world are not as fortunate, but remember China was the first one to get infected, but it also appear, appears that the aid that the market is really counting on is not here. Although our president is fairly strategic from what I understand, he's lagging in the polls, but he was also lagging in the polls 17 days ago, four years ago too when that Access uh, Hollywood story came out and then he ended up winning the election. So I'm not big on the polls and the Russell is no longer leading. Let me show you. NASDAQ is up 0.95. The Russell is only, it's actually down. So yeah, th this is good for Trump. Last week, the week before, we're very positive for, for Biden because the Russell does not like the trade war and Biden is not gonna go for this trade war. So the Russell was pricing that in, but again, about uh, two, three days ago, as soon as, as soon as Trump got back into White House, it started favoring the S&P 500 again. So that's positive. I am seeing upside in technology. The odds are we're going to hit new highs. I mean, it looks like we're gonna hit new highs. We could cool off. Let me look at the RSI. Let me take a quick look here to tell you what I'm seeing. Nah, still, we still have a little bit more to go. Not seeing divergence, see more upside. Let's look at momentum levels. Momentum levels usually give us a good clue. Let's look at the NASDAQ. I haven't done this in a while for you guys. Might as well do it today. Oh my, oh, we're overbought. We are so overbought right now. Folks, the upside is very, very, very limited. I mean, if we may have a little run up here. I mean, this is it. Look at that, 90th percent, 91th percentile, 200 day. Yeah, don't don't hold your breath for big gains on the NASDAQ 100. They're not coming right now. I mean, we are so, look at this. We're already back up to the 89th percentile. And look at what happens every time we get up here. And this is pretty reactive. This is the 50 day. So we're really bullish. We can go up another day or two, but the sentiment is way, way, way overdone. We need to cool off and we need to cool off big right now. So again, um, I wouldn't be going long some techs right now. I would be thinking more about the broad market or I would look at tech stocks that have sold off, which is what I'm gonna talk about right now. Now, this is my sniper. I'm gonna talk about two stocks that are making a comeback right now, PDD, Pindudu, and JB Hunt Transports. Now, if I was a trading man, I like JB Hunt better because it's a transport and I think transports are gonna rally. Ticker symbol JBHT, I would put a buy stop right at the 139 price level 
and I would liquidate it at the 132.60 level, right at the moving average. So again, I would go long at the 139 level on a buy stop, and I would liquidate it at the 132, 132.50 level, right when it gets to the moving average. And PDD, be careful on this one. It, it has more risk because the NASDAQ is just really overdone right now. But if you look here, you will see a good entry at about $86 level and a liquidation right at the 78.60 level, right at the moving average. See that moving average, the middle line? That If it goes below that, you want to liquidate it. And it's right now at about the $78 level. So you would buy right around the 86 and you would liquidate right around the $78 level. Now, I've got something big for you. Don't go anywhere. I've got something really big for you today. There's a brand new technology that could permanently, yes, permanently affect the finance of millions of Americans. I mean this. A disruption that if invested in today could literally lead to a surge of new wealth unlike anything we've seen in the invention or since the invention of the internet. Can you imagine something so big that it hasn't that we haven't seen something so big since the beginning of the internet? Now that's explosive. I'm talking about a 15 trillion dollar technology breakthrough. 15 not not million, not billion, 15 trillion dollar breakthrough. Once the cat is out of the bag, there's no turning back. You can either ride this disruption into a massive stream of wealth or potentially see your wealth flipped upside down by it in no time. Folks, you cannot, you cannot afford to miss this. This is disruptive, brand new technology. It's going to permanently impact the finance of millions of America. It's a $15 trillion breakthrough. And again, once the cat is out of the bag, there's no turning back. There is no turning back. You can either ride it, as I said, into a massive stream of wealth, or completely ignore it, potentially to your detriment. I don't want you to see that. I want you to get in on it. This is really big and it's important. Click on the link below to catch this urgent video regarding this massive, massive reveal. You need to see this now. I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.